Madam President. And what a joy it is to say those words, Madam President. Um, one of the things that, um, that Mr O'Neill admitted when he rightly talked about, you know, oppression in this university and elsewhere hundreds of years ago was that um, it was a long time before women were admitted to this university. And that's, uh, you know, and, uh, and the idea that women should be educated was heresy once. And so it's a particular delight to be um, thanking um, an outgoing um, woman president of the Oxford Union and to be back here and to actually be able to speak with another woman in the debate. So I would say to you, my friend Kate, that you said earlier that the, the white men should, uh, should, should move over and perhaps even, I think you said, shut up. And um, all I can say is, your wish is our command, because it's my turn now. <laughs> um, and we're, we're having this debate about free speech um, a few days before International Women's Day. And we're having this debate about free speech um, in a week where the government of India has banned a film called India's Daughter, which is a, a documentary about the hideous Delhi gam, gang rape. And my understanding from the reporting is that uh, the government of India, which is the, the country that my parents came from in the late 1950s, has banned, has banned that film on the grounds that it offends the honour of India and it is a defamation on that stage. So we must be incredibly careful when, we, you know, when we're negotiating these, in this difficult territory. Now, this has been a heated and at times quite emotional debate, and no worse, no worse for it, in my view, because this stuff is incredibly important. And many of you are undergraduates and students, but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't deny the importance of the signals that are sent from this very old and important debating chamber and one should remember that and so I'm going to be a bit of a pedant and a, and a lawyer because I, I might be the director of liberty and the most dangerous woman in Britain as the sun once called me. <laughs> By the way that's the gift that keeps on giving <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you about all the nasty things people have said about me on the internet because this is not a competition for victimhood. I think victimhood is a, victimhood is a terrible thing. It turns people into, I don't know, into paedophiles and jihadis and and, and columnists or certain, <laughs> certain newspapers. Um, but, um, but, but, so um, we'll forget my notoriety and all of that. I, the one thing I will say is, if you are a human rights campaigner, if you ever want my job, you've got to remember that you've got to sometimes um, defend what can appear to be the indefensible. Now, normally for me, it is not Brendan O'Neill. Normally, it's Abu Qatada. Right, this is the joy of tonight, is I don't have to talk about Abu Qatada. <laughs> the French say, by the way, we're going to come to the French in a moment, the French say that a meal without wine is like a day without sunshine. For me, yeah, thank you. Monsieur, monsieur, merci. But, 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 but for me, it's a debate without mention of Abu Qatada, so I've just, I've just done it for you. But I'm not going to be a, um, I'm not going to do the, the liberty bit for a moment. I'm going to return to my original profession, which was I was a lawyer. And when I was a lawyer, I believed that you go back to the actual text of the, of, the, of, of the motion. So this House believes, I want you to support this, this House believes that the right to free speech always includes the right to offend. This union must support that motion. The right to free speech always includes the right to offend. But forgive me, Brendan, a right is not a duty. Okay? Right? Now, I believe I should be able to stand here and swear and, you know, do all of that stuff and be very rude and stomp about and, and you know, talk about my victimhood. And I don't think I should be lynched for it and I don't think I should be arrested or prosecuted for it. I just won't expect to be invited back <laughs> and I won't expect to persuade you to vote for, m for the motion. So that would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? And one of the dangers of the increasingly authoritarian state in which I have practised human rights in my adult life is that ASBOs, CRASBOs, public order offences have 
have created such an authoritarian climate that we've forgotten some of us. The art of kindness and politeness and sensitivity and advocacy and so on. And I don't denigrate the other. Not because, uh, I, I, not because I don't have the right to, but because it would make me a pretty unethical person and a not very pleasant human being and shammy no mates. <laughs> now, a few, not so long ago, people were rightly showing solidarity with people who suffered the atrocity in Paris. Right? And, and, and we were all new som Charlie at that point. And the same politicians, the same British politicians who were just we Charlie, just we Charlie, have now passed a law that would allow them effectively to censor university campuses. The same politicians who said just we Charlie are saying that the Home Secretary should be able to issue directions to university campuses, including yours, my friends, including yours, to say what de radicalisation looks like. And no doubt they are offended by all sorts of things that I think they should not be offended by. And while we're on the subject of that great country that is France and that great city that is Paris and our great friend over there, <laughs> I believe that freedom of speech must include the right to satire and the right to cartoons, even if they offend some people, but it extends to the right to wear the hijab when you take your university exams as well. Please. Please. If the publication of those cartoons leads to women who want to take their exams in hijab being subject to violent attack, and pr uh, uh, would you still defend that? Kate, the problem, and the reason why I raise that point, is that in France you're not allowed, the state doesn't allow you to wear the burqa or to wear the hijab when you take your exams. This is because it offends the, 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 the French identity of the state. I'll, I, I must finish, but I, 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 for, forgive me. Um, the bottom line is everybody loves human rights, including free speech. They love their own. It's other people's are a bit more of a problem. This, this motion doesn't say the right to incite violence, it says the right to offend. And I, I'm sure I've offended all sorts of people, including my teammates here tonight. This stuff, this stuff was paid for, this freedom of speech and these human rights were paid for by generations long ago and they were paid for in courage and in blood. They weren't, decide, they weren't designed to make us comfortable, they were designed to keep us free. Thanks for listening. Yeah.